just opened, Mr. Lowry. 30 minutes to showtime. Anything I can get you? How about a hotel with cable? Huh? Nah, just call me when the band starts. Hey, do you know they're playing last night's concert on the TV station here in town? No, sir, but that's, that's very impressive. Uh, I gotta go uh, lift some heavy stuff or something. Yeah, whatever. Any information concerning the whereabouts? Whoa! God is in your hand. My favorite food, my favorite food in the world. If anybody ever asks you, my favorite food, like any, like you'd care, but my favorite food is Mexican food. I'm telling you. I was raised in Texas. And Texas has the best Mexican food in the world. That's the truth. I, they have better Mexican food than they do in Mexico. And when you're in Texas and you're looking for a good place to go eat good Mexican food, never ask a skinny person where to go eat. They don't know. They knew they wouldn't be so skinny. Find the fattest hog you can and ask them where the trough is. I'm telling you. Skinny people don't know where to eat. And take them with you, bless their hearts. I tell you, I, I, I love to eat. I love, I love that fat, greasy, crunchy. Nah. I did a children's pastor's banquet for about a thousand children's pastors from all over the world not long ago. And they had a, you know, it's hard to cook for a thousand people. I've never tried it, but I'm sure it is. They had a steak and a baked potato and a salad. And then they had this moon-shaped, orange-colored vegetable on the plate. I'd never seen a moon-shaped orange-colored vegetable in my life. And I picked it up and bit into it and asked, it was just nasty. It, like, it crunched and it was, had no flavor. And I asked them what it was. And they said it was sweet potatoes. I said, sweet potatoes aren't supposed to crunch. Sweet potatoes are supposed to come out of the oven on Thanksgiving morning with marshmallows on top of them and nuts down in them and juice all through them. They're not supposed to crunch. Doritos are supposed to crunch. And I was up north, I admit, I was up north, and, and, and the lady said, well, oh, dear Brother Lowry, we don't overcook our vegetables in the north. We don't want to cook the vitamins out of the vegetables. I said, for goodness sakes, take a pill and cook the vegetables. You can get all the vitamins you need in a one-a-day. You don't want to be chewing on a one-a-day. Have you ever been into a vitamin pill? They taste awful because they got vitamins in them. That's why you need to cook those vegetables until the vitamins are gone and they'll taste better. Cook that broccoli till it's yellow, then pour cheese sauce over it. Die young, make a pretty corpse. That's my philosophy. I want my blood going through my veins. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through, pardon me. Mashed potatoes with a lake of gravy in it. Fried chicken, don't bake that. Leave the skin on that chicken. Don't make that bird die in vain. Fry that chicken. Fry it. And don't put sugar in your cornbread either. That is not of God. Sugar in the cornbread is cake. When you bite into cornbread, it's supposed to suck 90% of the moisture out of your body. Put the sugar in the tea. That's where it goes. Not that pink stuff. It causes cancer. I tell you, I like my tea so sweet. If you run out of syrup, you can pour it over your pancakes. And then whatever you do, don't exercise. I do, I, I do one sit-up a day. I get up in the morning, that's half. I lay down at night, that's the other half. I figured out a long time ago, my body is for nothing more than carrying my head from place to place. <laughs> that makes it sound like I'll eat anything. Hey, I didn't see you down there, little guy. <laughs> Let's check out the music video. But the bloated feeling that I get 
You just have a few more minutes to take advantage of these classic collectibles from Bill Gaither. Once again, Bill, these are classic collectibles, eight tracks from your early career. Tell us about that. Yes, they are eight tracks that include some of our lesser known hits. Well, they're not, they're not exactly hits. Uh, they're more like embarrassments. Oh, well, now, folks, we have plenty of these left. Well, okay, we have all of them left. But it's important to point out all of the different uses of these eight tracks besides music. They make wonderful doorstops or, or bookends or, or yes. paperweights. Paperweights. Or if you want to prop open a window on a sunny day, there's still plenty left. But they're still selling faster than most Mark Lowry albums. Oh, we had him on here. Couldn't move anything. Like many other men, I suffer from a full head of hair. Hi, I'm Sidney Scheinberg. Male pattern hairiness can be cured when you join the Hair Loss Club for Men. Using the power of radiation technology, we hit you with our specially created follicle phaser. 
These rays disintegrate scalp cells and kill every hair on your head right down to the roots. In just days, you'll start losing unwanted hair and start a new life, free from those pesky hair care worries forever. It's great. I mean, I've always looked at people like Telly Savalas and Yul Brenner and thought, man, I wish I could have a head like that. Now I can. Thanks, Hair Loss Club. I can shower in it, I can swim in it, I can bungee jump in it, and my wife loves it. So kiss those hair gels and shampoos goodbye. Come to the Hair Loss Club for Men, where I'm not only the president, I'm a client. Those evangelists, you remember those evangelists that would come through our church, bless their hearts, they never knew what the guy before him had already preached. They'd preach that same thing. First Corinthians 11, 14, doth not even nature itself teach you to shame for a man to have long hair. <laughs> I'd always meet him at the door and say, yeah, it says it's a shame, not a sin. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things are shame. It's a shame it's too hot in here tonight. <laughs> Makes you glad you ain't going to hell, doesn't it? It's a shame they never found that other scripture right below it that says, but if there be any contentious among you, against such we have no law, neither the churches of God. In other words, get on to the things that are important. It's a shame we don't hear more about not, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house of many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. It's a shame. It's a shame we didn't hear more about, for our present suffering is not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. If we'd have heard that, they'd have had me. They'd have said, yeah, because see, all those evangelists that came through town, they'd preach on our hair, but they never did mention their gluttony. Most of them had those stomachs hanging so low, they'd walk across the stage, their stomach would be getting rug burn. Those weren't vests. You know, those weren't vests they were wearing in the 70s. Those were girdles. They'd have those buttons stretched so tight if they could aim properly, they could have cleaned off a deacon board. But well, they'd have had me if they'd have quoted that Romans 8 chapter where it says our present suffering is not worth comparing and that we wait for the redemption of our bodies. Our body is not redeemed. That's why we're falling apart. That's why we're fighting the battle of the bees, baldness, bifocals, bridges, bulges, bow-legged knees, and bunions. <laughs> you think your body's redeemed? Grab a mirror, baby. It's falling apart. Can't believe this. Boring myself with my own act. Baby, he loves me, and that is why he is with me. Because if he loved you, he'd be with you. But no, see, he is with me now. Yeah. Excuse me, girlfriend. If you think that you are stealing my man, we're going to take this on our side. All right, okay. because you're going to take right. your little homework and self mm. going out of here. Ladies, no, no. ladies, please. What happens when two women love the same man, and that man is ugly? We'll have answers today on Lowry. So this is the first edition of the Carmen Collector's Plates, right? Oh yeah, they're, they're really cool. Um, like they have my picture on it and everything. What, what, what would be the value now, the street market value of a plate like that? Well, as long as you don't eat off it or anything. Um, probably it'll be worth in a few years as much as a Mr. Sulo from Star Trek. Oh, and that is good. Whoa! <laughs> Glad to be here tonight. <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> what is that? A sea anemone or something? <laughs> Has everyone seen this? <laughs> oh, comedy. <laughs> but seriously, is, uh, has anyone heard that new Michael Jackson album, Thriller? <laughs> Thriller. <laughs> Ooh, scary. But you know, seriously, I think Vincent Price is doing some of his best work there. The Thriller. <laughs> it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, uh, wait, 
Is anyone here from Peoria? In the back there. Hey, Willard Scott here. Today we're going to wish Milford Fitzrucker of Shaky Palms, Florida, a happy 103rd birthday. Hey, tell us, Milford, what's it like to be 103? Well, Dillard, it may be fine for some folks, but my hair is on the dresser. My teeth are in a glass. My hearing aid needs batteries. My kidneys don't just pass. My blood is thin, my knees don't bend, got spurs on my spine. My heart is in terrific shape. Just too bad it didn't mind. I take a bath in Epsom salts. I drink Geritol six packs. Finally gave up butter, though, after 16 heart attacks. My back is out, my hip just broke. Whoops! There goes a ligament. And nature calls so often, I think that I just win. Any hyperactive people here tonight? I thought I sensed there was some in the crowd. I was a hyperactive kid. I tell you what, I knew about hyperactivity. I was on Ritalin for most of my childhood. Every night, Mom and Dad used to tuck me into bed after I'd had my whipping. What? You mean you didn't get a whipping every night before you went to bed? <laughs> every night they took me into bed after I'd had my whipping. And my parents believed in spanking. You see, I, I was watching some TV talk show the other day. They had some pseudo-psychological idiot on there saying, Oh, don't ever spank your children. It'll squelch their personality. <laughs> I'm here to tell y'all mama squelched my personality all over the house. Until you've been shook so hard, spit flies out of your mouth, swings around, slaps you on the back of the head, you have not had a happy childhood. It's those same people tell you not to spank your kids that tell you not to cook your vegetables. It's that same crowd. They're all communists. <laughs> Mom and Daddy took me into bed and say, Mark, oh, I heard it every night. Every night they'd say, Mark, one day God's going to use you. I don't know if they always believed it, but they said it every night. <laughs> One day, God's going to use you. But until he does, take this pill. <laughs> I had a teacher in the third grade, Miss Johnson. I'll never forget her. I was in her class for a whole week. <laughs> she was so pretty. She had long black hair. She had homegrown fingernails. These were not Lee Press-On nails. These were homegrown. And I would come home from school with her fingernail prints in my arms. And my mother went down to that principal and said, I know he's hyperactive. And I know he's a handful, but he's not coming home from school with fingernail prints in his arms from his teacher. I want him moved to another teacher's classroom. So they moved me over to Mrs. Holland's class. Mrs. Holland! She was older than Miss Johnson. She wasn't as pretty as Miss Johnson because Miss Johnson was young and fresh out of college and Miss Holland had taught for many years. In fact, she's about 10 years older than God when I met her. <laughs> and she had big fluffy hands and when I would get hyper, she would take me on walks around the Hollybrook Elementary School and she'd have the student teacher take over the class. When I couldn't sit still, instead of fussing at me or grabbing me, she'd say, Mark, let's go for a walk. And she told me God liked hyperactive kids. She told me the same thing my parents had told me, that God had a special place for hyperactive kids. And that it was okay to be hyperactive. I'd never heard anybody say God liked me before. I'd heard people say God loved me, you know, and God has to love you. I mean, he's God. God is love, and that's sort of what he does. But I never heard he liked me. I mean, there is a difference, you know. There are a lot of, a lot of people I love, I don't like. I go through Thanksgiving and Christmas too. <laughs> oh, don't sit there. Some of you sit there like a bunch of pious gas bags. You know exactly who I'm talking about. You know who popped in your head. When I, you know what I'm talking about. You'll cry at their funeral, but you don't want to go on vacation with them. You know exactly who I'm talking about. 
but God likes us. She told me God likes hyperactive people. God likes hype. There's two kinds of people in the world, hyperactive and boring. And God loves you both. And God likes you both. Hyper creative. That's what mama called me. God likes you. Miss Holland told me that. Ms. Holland retired from teaching the third grade several years ago, and her, mo her, her mother, I don't think so, her daughter, her daughter wrote me and said that, said that her mother, Mrs. Holland, was going to retire from teaching the third grade. And she said, my mother has talked about you to every third grade class she's had since you were in her class. And would you write her a congratulatory letter? And so I sat down and wrote her a letter. She'd written enough novels about me, I'd warn them home from school every day, you know. And I wrote her a letter and I told her, I said, Mrs. Holland, the difference between you and Miss Johnson is Miss Johnson had fingernails that love flesh, but you had hands that love children. And I want to thank you for loving me and telling me that God liked me. Can I help it if I can't sit still? Can I help it if I have a short attention span? I'm not like that all the time. Never took anything to do And I'm bored. I think I'll flip to a music video. Action. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. What I want to know now is what we're going to do. I don't understand a lot of this new music, but I like the groove. <laughs> I like to groove. You know, I'm dating again, and uh, I really don't understand that whole dating thing. Uh, as I understand it, you're supposed to take flowers with you or something. I don't. Where do you get those, actually? Thank you, Lady Dee Dee, for that wonderful special. You're welcome, Dee. Music. Thank you. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will turn to First Chronicles 11, 14, doth not even nature itself teach you it's a shame for man to have long hair. Amen. I'm telling you, it's a shame. Amen. Get your hair cut for the kingdom of God is in your hand. This rampant rebellion crossing America today, I'm telling you, it's wrong. They're buying evil clothes. They're eating evil food. Amen. They're growing evil sideburns. And what's that evil Evil, I'm telling you, it's rebellion. So fill out that donation card. Fill it out to me, Deacon Larwell Jones, so that this ministry may go on, that it may be fruitful and multiply on wings of eagles, strong as the burning bush that killed Goliath. And when David slew the lions with two smooth stones, five loaves, his nets were so full that Moses left the ark. We interrupt this stupid program to bring you this special report. The $10 million jackpot number is in. The winning number is five. We interrupt this easy money to bring you an urgent, really special report from Weather Center 9's Storm Sucker Radar Team. This is Chuck Chickerman reporting on the hurricane that's reached apocalyptic proportions. It's headed toward the following areas. In we interrupt this natural disaster to bring you this really, really special urgent report from the president on the impending invasion of the Earth by a superior race of man-eating. And now, a test of the emergency broadcast system. You're watching the Special Report Network. Special reports, 24 hours a day. I travel part-time with Bill Gaither, who is a legend in contemporary Christian music. And And uh, he's written so many great songs in the church, like The King is Coming and Because He Lives and He Touched Me and, and so many wonderful songs. And, and he asked me about, well, 1988, he called me and asked me if I would like to join the vocal band. I didn't even know Bill Gaither. I don't even know how he got my number. But I was sure glad he did. <laughs> he called me and asked me if I'd like to join the Gaither vocal band. You know, and, and I knew Bill Gaither, Bill Gaither discovered Sandy Patty. Did you know that? Bill Gaither discovered Larnell Harris. Bill Gaither discovered Carmen. Bill Gaither discovered Steve Green. Bill Gaither discovered George Beverly Shea. I mean, the list goes on and on. He asked me if I'd like to join the Gaither vocal band. I said, does Billy Graham have a quiet time? You bet your sweet bippy. And I didn't tell him that I, you know, I, I can't read music. I didn't think that was the time to bring that up. And I didn't tell him that, that I'd never sung baritone before. I didn't want to bring that up either. But I went and auditioned. And, and he asked me if I'd like to join the group. And come to find out, you know what Bill Gaither does? He discovers your hidden talent. He does. Like when he found Sandy Patty, she was a bass. <laughs> Bill said, you know, if you hit a few high notes, you might really go somewhere. And when he found Larnell Harris, he was white. <laughs> When Bill found me, I was hyperactive. <laughs> Even Bill can't change everybody. <laughs> what an amazing man he is. He's written all these great songs. And when I first joined the group, you know, I thought he must be perfect. For written, he touched me, the king is coming, joy comes in the morning. He's got a bus, big old bus. He owns his bus because he wrote, he touched me. <laughs> I wrote Big Booger Blues. That won't get you a bus. <laughs> No, I didn't really write Big Booger Blues, but I would have if I'd have thought of it. <laughs> but he's got, he, he's got a great bus. In the back of his bus, he's got a bedroom where he and Gloria sleep. While, while the rest of us are in bunks piled on top of each other, they've got a bedroom because he wrote, he touched me. <laughs> and, the, and they got two beds back there, kind of a Ricky and Lucy thing going on, if you ask me. <laughs> but you didn't hear that from me. And one of those first trips when I started traveling with him, I'd catch myself sometimes just staring at him, thinking, this is the guy who wrote, he touched me. <laughs> and one time he said I could sleep back there in the other bed because Gloria wasn't going with us. It was just the Gaither vocal band. It wasn't the trio. It was just the vocal band. He said that I could sleep back there in that other bed. So I was in one bed and he's in the other bed. And that's the way we like it. And, <laughs> and I went to bed first. I woke up about two in the morning 
and looked over in Bill's bed and thought he wasn't there because all I saw was a pile of pillows in his bed. Come to find out Bill Gaither, Mr. He Touched Me, <laughs> sleeps under pillows. He doesn't sleep under blankets like a normal person. He roots like a dog under a pile of pillows. I knew he was under there because I saw his nose peeking up through those pillows. Actually, it wasn't peeking. It was standing boldly, proudly. And I started staring at his nose thinking, that is Bill Gaither's nose. Well, I was staring at his nose. I found out he ain't perfect. He snores. Start off sort of like a pig digging for roots. Didn't stop there. It went on to the sound of a freight train hitting a bridge at about 90 miles an hour. Didn't stop there. Went on to the sound of a 747 trying to find a seat at the Crystal Cathedral from 30,000 feet. And I wouldn't even mind that as long as you keep a rhythm going. Yeah, he may have written The King is Coming, but folks, when the king does come, you better pray Bill in the sleep. Because we'll never hear Gabriel blowing his horn if Bill's blowing his. Good evening, and welcome to America's Most Annoying. Having given police the slip in cities from Tacoma to Virginia Beach, Dallas to Chicago, this menace to society still remains at large. Mark Lowry is wanted on six counts of disturbing the peace, nine counts of annoying behavior, and 483 counts of aggravated selling. Posing as a Jehovah's Witness selling Amway, he just barged his way into my home. And then, when my back was turned, set up his album table in the middle of my living room and refused to leave until I'd bought one of everything. Lock your doors, America! Lowry has been seen setting up his album and video table on people's lawns, in their flower beds, and on the roof of their cars at all hours of the day and night. This recent picture taken by a resident surveillance camera in the Atlanta area proves this desperate egotistical maniac will stop at nothing. If you have any information concerning the whereabouts of this public nuisance, please contact America's Most Annoying. Do not take the law into your own hands. Lowry is armed with his videos and considered dangerous. Uh, quite, quite frankly, when, uh, when I take the bus into town and uh, there's no, when I have to stand up, uh, has anyone had that experience? Standing up on the bus? Okay, um, more peanuts down here? Could we get some more refreshments down front? Oh! We interrupt to bring you an important update on the presidential hostage situation. The alien invaders have apparently... We interrupt this interruption for the following paid commercial program. So, who wants to see this baby make melon juice while it predicts the future? Ooh! So tell them Big Judd Brown sent you and order my new video dress for less and still be fashionable because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm -mm. Oh, how will the hairs of your head be numbered if they're as long as the lilies in the field heaven? Oh, folks, listen to me. Heaven was made for decent folk, not those hairy hipsters with ponytails and long hair and jewelry and earrings. I'm telling you, it's wrong. Mary Magdalene, she anointed the fig tree, but Jonah, he was eaten by locusts in the desert, and Parbar went farther than we could have ever dreamed. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold, like their mother, the youngest one in curls. Here's the story of a man named Brady who was busy with three boys of his own. They were four men living all together 
Yet they were bored to the bone Till the one day when the lady met this fellow ooh, ooh, They knew that it was much more than a hunch That this group should somehow form a family That's the way they all became the Brady Bunch The Brady Bunch The Brady Bunch that's the way they became the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Sit right back and you hear a tale, tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, a skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed Poor mountaineer, barely kept his family fed And then one day he was shooting at some food And up through the ground come a bubbling crew All right, I Green Acres is the place to be Farm living is the life for me Land spreading out so far and wide Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside receiving great testimonials from satisfied members just like John here. Sydney, when I had hair, no one wanted to hear our band play. I sent in flyers, made phone calls, but the answers were always the same. We have no available dates. We're booked through the millennium. We're looking for someone less hairy. But now, thanks to Hair Loss Club for Men, my calendar is filled and my comb isn't. Thanks, Sydney. That's beautiful, John. I think you've never looked better. Has everyone seen this? It's kind of a sea anemone theme. I don't understand it, but um, it's fresh, as the kids say. I think it's a, a fresh type of a backdrop thing. But uh, really, uh, 
So apparently, the winning lotto jackpot has paid the aliens enough to release the president. And as a bonus, their ships of death have blown the hurricane back into the ocean. Now, back to you, Regis. For when two or more pass through the eye of a needle, so shall the bonds of matrimony fall like the walls of Jericho. Preach it. What a mustard seed begets the leper! So let no man put us under! Let's pray, Father. He was born of a virgin over 2,000 years ago, and that little virgin, where they tell me, was about 13 years of age when she was overcome by the Holy Spirit. And she was impregnated with the very seed of God. Of course, she had to keep it quiet. She couldn't very well go to her mom. I mean, she was going down a road no one had ever been down before. Mary was the first one to carry the gospel. Did you know that? No one had ever been down that path before. She couldn't go to her mom and say, really, mom, God did this. Who would believe her? They kept it quiet. They kept it a secret. But on that Christmas morning, the angels couldn't keep it quiet. That's what I love about angels. They can't keep a secret either. I have the worst time keeping secrets. My idea of keeping a secret is telling one person at a time. <laughs> but they rolled the heavens back and they said, Glory to God, peace on earth, goodwill to men. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. The shepherds came running and the wise men came running. And I've often wondered what was going through Mary's mind when she cradled in her arms the Lord Jesus. I wonder if she realized those little hands that were now forming around hers were the same hands that had scooped out the oceans and formed the rivers. Those little feet were the same feet that had walked on stars and been worshipped by angels. Those little lips were the same lips that had spoken the worlds into existence. I wonder what was going through her mind when the one who had spoken the worlds into existence was now uttering unintelligible baby noises in her arms. I wrote a little song that I never recorded. I've never recorded up until this, this night, and a lot of people have sung it, and I'm very blessed that they have. I didn't write the music. Buddy Green wrote the music. I figure if you can't read music, you really shouldn't be writing it. <laughs> but I wrote the words, and, and I hope you to indulge me tonight as I sing a song I wrote several years ago. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby has come to make you new this child that you've delivered will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man Mary did you know your baby boy will come a storm with his hand did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels tried Your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb.
that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? This sleeping child you're holding is the great Mr. Lowry. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody, I'm Mark Lowry. The credits. Do people read them? Do people care? I'm in the credits. Listen. Watch the credits. Okay, don't watch the credits. Okay, who cares? All right. Hey, listen, good luck. It's a pleasure to work for you. I hope you have fun with this because you're a beautiful man. And let's see if I look halfway down. I'll just keep doing them and try to make them folksier and friendlier and give you all that old whatever. Ding dong. Four, three, take one. There was a couple down in Florida, and I was walking with the guy, and, the, and, the, and Gloria was walking ahead with his wife. And he said, man, we ate in a great restaurant last night. <laughs> he said, what was the name of it? He says, it was, it was, it was he, says, he says, what's the name? What's the name of the that flower that comes out in the spring and it blossoms out in a beautiful red blossom and it's got thorns? And he says, it rose. He said, yeah, it rose. <laughs> hey, Rose, what's the name of that restaurant? <laughs> I, I will know that I've arrived when you parody one of my songs. Oh, so, uh, how nice. Now I guess it's happened. You have arrived. Well, we're looking at more of your songs. Yeah, which ones? <laughs> Mark Lowry, he just, he just, oh, he means the world to me. I have no idea what I would say to Mark Lowry after what he's put me through. I think a lot of people are gonna be ministered to by this. It's like you're really wanting to sell these plates. Come on, Carmen. Come on, Carmen! <laughs> he's wanting to sell these plates! Wait, may I hit you right? <laughs> he just got let out recently. I'll get you, Superman! Don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> now, back to you, Mark Furman. I took a plane ride the other day and that sensation of, uh, you know, lifting off the ground and then that's like dating too, isn't it? Because you don't really know where you're going. <laughs> it's crazy. You need more refreshments up front? Is everyone okay? I just want you to be comfortable. Not not necessarily lethargic, but uh, but comfortable. Has everyone seen this? How would you sum up the experience of being on our new video? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it hurts to be this good. I bet with a show like this on the road, everybody's gonna want to tour with me. Why not? I'm charming, I'm quiet, I'm a snappy dresser. <laughs> okay, if you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs>